threats from heat waves and the number of homes lost to floods could increase dramatically, even under a best case scenario modelled by the Climate Change Department. Let's bring in my colleague, political correspondent Cam Redden. This document is laying the ground for setting that 2035 climate target. Chris Bowen, the Energy Minister, Trudy says he now has the recommendations from the Climate Change Authority, which goes a long way to setting Australia's 2035 target. So fair to say that the announcement of that figure is imminent. In the lead up to that, though, today, the government releasing the first climate risk assessment. This is just the summary document, about 60 pages, but thousands of pages of technical assessment analysing line by line the potential risks of climate change, of the renewables transition and all the various connected factors are released today. And a number of things to pick through, but the economic picture of the worst case or the best case scenario for the impacts of climate change are stark. These are just some of the figures laid bare today. An assessment that even under the current trajectory, a best case scenario, that by 2050, the government may need to fork out $40 billion a year on dealing with natural disasters. That's floods, fires, uh, bushfires, cyclones and more. In addition to that, those living in bushfire prone areas or flood zones or even near coastal parts of suburban Australia could see hundreds of billions of dollars wiped off their collective property value because of the increasing risk. And that's before you factor in rising insurance costs with the view that large parts of Australia, even areas where people are currently living, may be uninsurable and at some point in the future may be uninhabitable. Other impacts include a reduction in productivity and other things. But under questioning today in releasing this document, the Minister is trying to paint an optimistic picture. He notes that there would be a greater cost of doing nothing and notes that there will not be uh, any avoidable cost in this sense. And when asked earlier about the impact on households, taking into account all of the potential risks and costs, he notes that not all Australians will feel this evenly, but is trying to weigh on the positives in terms of reducing the risk rather than eliminating all potential cost burdens. For this financial burden of climate change, of the renewables transition, is it going to all end up on the family budget? There's a remarkable opportunity uh, as well um, for households to be at the centre of this journey in a way which puts them more in control of their assets, not less, and more in control of their decisions, not less, and maximising the savings that are at their disposal. In the old days, we all used to get an energy bill, and that was our entire say in the matter. You just had to pay the energy bill, you had no further say. That That is changing and will change. Now, Australians have a power station on their roof and in their garage and in their driveway with their batteries. Yes, we have challenges, of course. International energy prices continue um, to provide pressures, but we also have remarkable opportunities in our country. So Chris Bowen making the case for action here ahead of that 2035 target, as you say, Cam, but what about some of those impacts that Australians are going to feel on things like the heat, on flooding, what what is that all wash out? Yeah, for how it's going to change our lives, Trudy. This is the why, in the words of Chris Bowen, this entire report has been released, to try and show the Australian public why action is necessary. We can show you some of the implications of warming and what this has been based on is a three uh, a three degree Celsius increase on what's known as the baseline level. So that's pre-industrial, pre-1900. The current estimate, we're at around one and a half, so about a doubling of that. But this is the accepted trajectory by the climate climate change authority, or at least around that. You can see the warning implications here. An extra two weeks every year of heat wave like weather, a 400% increase in heat-related deaths, think heat strokes and other uh, illnesses and implications of higher temperatures. An additional, in a worst-case scenario, nearly 200 additional days of flooding in coastal areas and more than 3 million people living now in a flood zone. That's all by 2050 if three degrees of warming is realised. To give you one example, this report uh, targets on Sydney and suburban Sydney, warning that under that scenario with three degrees warming, there would be an additional 300 days of flooding. Now, that's particularly in coastal areas, what they call soft sand areas, so beaches, that sort of thing, but also in suburban areas. And they name check areas like Darlinghurst and Cogra and Darling Point, highly populated areas around Sydney's waterways, as well as a more than 400% increase in heat deaths. So, Trudy, much of the reason that the government has put this out today is to mount the case to the Australian people of why they need a 2035 target before releasing that a little later in the week. You're expecting to get that around Thursday. It's still got to be ticked off by the Cabinet. As Chris Bowen acknowledged, Cam, thank you.